colorblind. What I'm saying is that you cannot use race as the qualifying factor, but you can look at a history, an example that may somewhat set someone at a disadvantage. So again, I think you're trying to oversimplify what, what this, this very complex issue is. And there's room for debate here. So for example, we, in, there was historically a policy of affirmative action. And again, I'd refer you back to that University of Michigan Supreme Court case. But again, the, the standard in the United States is the equal employment opportunity. Should the laws in the United States be colorblind and not make reference to race at all? Yes or no? They need to correct for past injustice. Okay, so you think that race should be used and should be referred to in the law and everybody should not be treated equally. They should take into consideration race. But initially, in the beginning, you said that was racism. So race can't be the ultimate factor. Again, like with college applications, it can be part of a bigger picture. Uh, you know, if everyone's running the race and they're starting in different locations, then it's not really the same race. So you think that Obama's daughters are at a disadvantage? Well, historically, their ancestors might have been. But they, individually, are they at a disadvantage or at an advantage to your daughters or my daughters? Well, I'd say half the country might say that. Right. So. Race doesn't determine whether you're disadvantaged or not. The individual's individual person may be uh, uh, disadvantaged or not, right? Anyway, look, Ra David, you have uh, given a great interview and uh, you've uh, expressed your views and made the best argument possible, I think. But in my view, you, what you call oversimplification is simply that you're contradicting yourself. And so either you think the law should be colorblind or not. And if you think it should be colorblind, you shouldn't be using race in any, in any and you should judge people by their individual actions, not, not by, the, by the racial group from which they come. You follow the difference? So you're taking into consideration a group of, of black people and saying, this group, had these problems in the past. Therefore, you're a member of that group. Therefore, we're going to treat you differently. Right? Can I, can I say something? So I think there's a, incredibly important to recognize a history of institutional racism in which the, the mechanisms that are in place were put in place in a, dis a way to specifically disadvantage people. That was wrong, right? So and the same thing is wrong if they disadvantage white people or Asians or whoever. Again, there's a difference between institutional racism such as Jim Crow. And we, there have to be progressive steps taken to... That was horrible, right? Yes, Jim Crow was a horrible law. Right. So we shouldn't follow that example. We should just get rid of using race in the law and using it as a factor based on the conclusions that you stated originally. You said that that would be racism if you use race as a factor to evaluate people's merits or their character. Okay, so there's the examples that I said before. The Brazilian system of affirmative action that they use in higher institutions, and then the American approach, which does not go to the same level as the affirmative action. We have it used to. It used to. Again, there was a Supreme Court decision. And, on and they declared it unconstitutional, but they slipped it through in, in a little bit watered-down version which is they use race as a factor, one factor amongst others, and that's racism. I d completely disagree with that. I think you do need to address for past historical uh, issues so on that. You should take race into consideration when you make judgments about people. I think I've been consistent on this. It is not the determining factor. It can be one of many bigger picture items. But previously you agreed that if you use race as a factor, to evaluate other people's merits or character, that's racism, instead of focusing strictly on their actions. You agree to that. Now you change your mind. Okay. I haven't changed my mind. I haven't changed but you're my contradicting mind. yourself. How am I contradicting myself? I just explained to you. First you say you shouldn't use race as a factor, and then you say, yeah, you should. My position's been consistent here. So race can't be an exclusive factor. You can't have someone- But before you didn't say exclusive, you said a factor. 
Right. So the system we have in the United States is one of a comprehensive approach where, again, addressing for historical discrimination, things like institutional racism, things like, uh, you know, if, if your grandparents were illiterate, you're at a huge disadvantage. So we have to take steps to address those issues. Illiterate has nothing to do with your race. But anyway, David, we have done a great interview. You've uh, made all the arguments possible to, I think, uh, justify these programs. I've taken the opposite side, and uh, I think, you know, there's m not much more to be said. <laughs> so, Do you have a card? Uh, let me give you my hand. I would like to see your business card. Do you have a business card? I didn't bring any. Why? Right. And what was, you said the 